And then came October 2nd. I fell asleep early the night of October 1st, and I fell asleep before the evening news and woke up the next day to find out what happened. And I immediately recognized that one of my best friends and an employee of the city of Las Vegas was attending the event that weekend. So getting that weird feeling, I texted him and got no response. I called him, received no response, and went to work at about 6.30, hoping that he would come walking, skipping through the door at 7. That didn't happen. At 7.15, we got the phone call that we lost Cameron Robinson. I know afterwards is a bit of a blur, but one of the attorneys in my office said, we need to get out of here for a few minutes and go take a walk. And I looked out the window and I said, where are we going to go walking? And the next thing I know, my phone rang literally within 30 seconds of her suggesting we go for a walk, and it was Jay Plegenkohl. And Jay said, Brad, if the city can find us a piece of land, not give it to us, not sell it to us, just loan it to us, we would like to put together some kind of a memorial immediately. That was 8.30 in the morning, October 2nd. At 10 o'clock, Jay was in our offices, and we found a piece of property within 15 minutes, thanks to Tom Perigo and Jorge Cervantes. At 4 o'clock, Jay came back with this. The original version of this was originally almost a cocktail napkin, but it's the design for the garden that we're sitting in tonight. So Jay said, what do we do to get going? And I said this last year, and I'll repeat it, we made the best decision I think we've made in a long time. We decided to do nothing as a city and just let these people go, and they did. On Tuesday morning, all the trees were donated by Moon Valley Nursery, all the shrubs were donated by Star Nursery, and all the labor was volunteer. But there's some remarkable things, and that just what happened behind us is just one of them. The very first day, Mark Hamelman, if you're here, if I'd like you to raise your hand, Mark. There we go. Mark, in the back, was out here looking for the place to locate the Tree of Life. So those of you who are familiar with the garden, there are 58 trees and one additional tree called the Tree of Life. And so Mark was looking for the location based on Jay's drawing to locate the Tree of Life, and he was kicking in the dirt. And as he kicked in the dirt, he found a chain. And when he kicked on the chain, this is what was attached to it. If you can see it, it's a medallion, that's the tree of life. And it was buried right there in that spot for God knows how many years before it was located. The garden began pretty much that afternoon with Daniel Perez picking up trees all by himself and throwing them in holes, with Jay and everybody just working their tail off to get this thing open. And somehow in four days, this garden opened Friday of that week last year, five days. So here we are tonight a year later, and with a new garden. As you can see, the trees are still here. They're more vibrant than ever. And you can see the original wall, which was tattered and not going to hold up much longer. It's been removed, and it's being stored. But behind you, you can see the new remembrance wall with the names of the 58 souls we lost that night. And you can see the waterfall and the quotes, and you can see all the things that people have left behind. So Jay, when I wake up tomorrow morning, October 2nd, and somebody says, let's get out of here and go for a walk, you've given it to us. Thank you. With that, it's my great pleasure to introduce the mayor of the city of Las Vegas, the best mayor in the world, Carolyn Goodman. days, weeks, months, and years. It was a time of urgency and pain for us all. An urgency, knowing that blood was not the answer, to be able to do something, to do something physical, to have a purpose, a meaning, to touch, to be needed, to connect with somebody, to help. Jay, Daniel, Mark gave so many that sense of belonging, of connecting with the creation of the miracle of this community healing garden. 
It came from the heart and soul of our people, who then found they could begin to breathe again and feel part of something permanent, something resilient, even broaching on ethereal. It's about earth and trees and plants and living and life and surviving into years to come, far beyond any of our years. And it's always with that special insignia of remembrance of one October. Tonight is the second, maybe more important, but maybe not so, permanent dedication of the space of human healing, of reverence, of serenity honoring the beautiful 58 souls we lost, giving us a more committed dedication to be bound by goodness, sensitivity to others, and for a bigger, more resilient and peaceful humanity for our future. I want to thank you all for being here tonight because it's not about me, it is not about anyone other than those who will forever carry the pain and the mark of a 1 October 2017. For those who believed in Carpe Diem, seize the day and make your life more giving, more important for others. It's not about me, I, my. It's about our community, this resilient God honored place that we live in and the permanency of the love and humanity that we all share. You're blessed to be alive. It is a time of remembrance. And at 10 o'clock we will move on tonight with no names and no honoree of anybody. It's not about us. It's about the 58 souls fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, children who were lost that night and are no longer with us. And for those who have survived and continue to fight for survival, we still have those who continue to suffer and have operations still from that heinous act. Tonight is giving thanks to a higher power. We know it, it was terrain we saw the sign in the sky. We're a blessed community, and each one of you who has another day in life, whether it was from 1 October or from this day moving forward, be thankful and make it meaningful. We're a community, and we want to be strong, and we want to love each other, and we want to be equal and fair. So God bless you all, and Jay, Daniel and Mark, we're humbled, we're on our knees to you. For every light and every light that you have turned on in perpetuity, far beyond our years, this garden will survive as the permanent place in Las Vegas that was created through you and your team by the people that love life and love humanity. Jay, you walk so high. I'm so proud of you and grateful for our humble community of Las Vegas, Nevada. Thank you, Daniel, Mark, and Brad, and Tom, and every person who every day, for those four days, worked tirelessly bringing us water and building this gorgeous garden. God bless you. Thank you. is somebody I've known for a very long time uh, who represents Ward 3 and uh, before this garden was conceived this was going to be a park some years down the line but when the event occurred that night and the opportunity to do something beautiful was presented to him Councilman Coffin immediately seized the moment and decided that this was the right thing at the right time in the right place so let me introduce you Councilman Bob Coffin Thank you, Brad, my friend of many years. Our kids went to school together, and now they mourn together. This is uh, a time for many emotions, and I'm beginning to feel 
the same emotions right now that I felt in the hours and days right after the tragedy. Uh, right now, a year later, people are fighting, quarreling about, you know, who should pay, who should, who should fix my pain, who should do it. Do dollar bills do that? Do, do prayers do that? Well, all of the things that people can think of that are material, talk about, and spiritual is probably the best help that anybody can get. It is truly sad the mayor has said what we cannot do for the lost souls and the more than 500 that were wounded. A catastrophe in peacetime, only exceeded by the uh, attack on the World Trade Center. It's the worst thing that ever happened in this town, a town I've been a resident for almost 70 years. This is ground that uh, used to be a business, and then it was things fell away, and we're in the midst of a regrowth and a rebirth of our downtown in Las Vegas, and we have this opportunity to, to think about the importance of the, the lives that were lost and the people that were wounded. But right now, I still feel the same anger that I did a year ago. That was my emotion, anger, and it was doubled by the fact that Carpe diem, seizing the moment. I think simultaneously, uh, Commissioner Sisolak asked his district attorney, and I asked our good friend Brad, what we could do about the instruments of death that were used in this slaughter. Well, the bad news we both received about the same time, Steve, as you know, was that the legislature had taken away all authority for local government to regulate firearms, even attachments like bump stocks. So the anger grew, and anger from frustration, as much as anything, because if there was anything we could do, we could do what we have the power to do, and we are powerless until the legislature meets in February. So this is not politics, this is not about life it's not about the, it is about the frustration which causes my anger the vice president has been here speaker Pelosi has been here we've seen people who really really are moved by what they see and what they feel and they feel different than i do because i feel anger anger that i could not fulfill my duty as a councilman as charged in our charter and in the charter of the county to protect the citizens of our city and our county. Powerless makes us angry. And I think this is something to consider as we look at all the emotions. And I think anger is as valid an emotion as any there can be because nothing can help you cope with loss as much as the opportunity to redress the grievance. So we are not finished. We'll be asking the next legislation to restore our authority so that we might do what is right for the residents and the tourists. The tourists who came by in helicopters while the mayor was speaking, coming back from their tour of the Grand Canyon, every evening at this time, 10 or 15 of them come by. It's a great reminder to all of us of why this town is here and why so many people were killed and wounded who were not from this town. We owe them the duty to keep them safe. Thank you very much. Now I would like to bring the visionary, uh, I used to call him last year an angel on earth, Jay Plegenkohl, who gave us this opportunity last year to find a place to heal. I, I can tell you before Jay gets up, if you've been to this garden for the first time, welcome and please keep coming. But many of you have found this the very first place when you returned to Las Vegas after October 1. And there hardly has been a day when you're not here somebody comes up and says I was there that night I was hit that night I picked up people that night I carried in my pickup truck that night and this is where they come and so Jay I can't give you a better introduction than that thank you Jay Plague and Cole thank you people ask me what I'd like people to take away from this garden when they come and visit and for me, this is what the garden means. On October 1st, 
2017, a senseless act of violence shattered a community's heart. This time, we as a community pushed back. We pushed back with a very deliberate act of compassion. People from across the city, from across the country, and the world came together on this empty piece of desert to plant the Las Vegas Community Healing Garden. Instead of retreating into fear, we as a community stepped forward. Together we planted a garden, not only of trees and flowers, but we planted a garden of love, hope, and compassion. Volunteers came forward and donations poured in. In one short week, the Las Vegas Community Healing Garden grew from the dust. The garden honors the lives lost on October 1st, but it also celebrates life, goodness, love, and compassion. There is beauty in this world if we choose to seek it. We can choose love over fear. We can choose light over darkness. We can choose life over death. We can choose hope over despair. We can choose to do good in this world. We can choose human kindness. We can help each other heal. This garden is a gift that we have given to each other. It is a sacred place for us to come with our brokenness. It is a place to come and sit in our grief. It is a place to pick up the shattered pieces of our lives. Together, with love and compassion, we will put these pieces together like the beautiful mosaic heart in the center of our garden. Take good care of each other, respect each other, and love each other. Thank you. Twenty-five hundred years ago, a Greek poet, when speaking of grief and recovery, wrote, Even in our sleep, pain which cannot forget falls drop by drop upon the heart, until in our own despair and against our own will comes wisdom through the awful grace of God. Those of you who were here that night, who were there at the Route 91 festival, know exactly what that means. And those of you who lost somebody also know exactly what that means. Even though it horribly seems like yesterday, it's been one year. We are here, and they are not. We share a wound, the pain which we feel every day. We are forever changed by one October. I am fortunate to be able to come to this garden. Anytime I want, I just work a couple blocks away, and I've asked myself many times, what would they do? What would those 58 souls do if they were here and we were not? They would honor you, knowing they could never be you. They would miss you, but never forget you. They would be crushed, but not destroyed. They would grieve, but never quit. The only way evil wins if we let it destroy us. Let us agree tonight and forever can never, never let evil win or break us. But the 58 souls whose names appear in the beautiful wall behind me, we must honor them by not just surviving, but by devoting our lives to making this a better world. Peace comes not from the gun, but from the human heart and our devotion to those we know and love. They lit a fire. And that's why we're here tonight to remember them. And to quote President Kennedy, the glow from that fire can truly light the world. May God bless you. May God bless Las Vegas. May God bless the 58 souls that we honor tonight. Thank you. <laughs> if I could ask the people that have roses sitting in the chairs around us, we're going to go to the wall and place a rose for each person here in the Healing Garden Wall. You will lead us there. Hmm? You will lead us there. I will. Because none of us know where you want us to go. Well, it's right here. Here. Here we go. Nomás necesito sacar un par de entrevistas y that's it.
pero este sí no, ok no pues yo necesito sacar un par de entrevistas antes de poder irme y no oh, traigo un montón yo vine para yo vine para no quedarme sin batería no este pero no ahorita están poniendo flores en la nueva pared esa que hicieron ok ok va